In this video, we're going to show some code examples from a live demonstration I recorded a little while back. Uh, this is a demonstration from in class, and it's called Threads in Java uh, Live Example. You can also find it just by searching Java Cincinnati. It just happens to be the first result that comes up. But the students are acting out several scenarios, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate those same scenarios. I've covered sleep yield, uh, weight, notify, and priorities in another video, in two other videos. In this video, I'm going to talk about synchronized. In synchronized, we have a unit of code where we want only one thread at a time to have access to the code. So we have to synchronize on an object. The trick is when you get to nested synchronizations, you can run into a potential issue where you can have a thread deadlock that's really tricky to uncover. So in this video, I want to show what a thread deadlock looks like by going through the debugger. I'm using the same program that I've used in the previous couple of videos, but I'm only going to show the concurrent thread. I'm going to remove the others just because, frankly, this is a confusing topic to begin with, so I want to take away anything that's going to be a distraction. Now, let's see what's going on here. I've created two threads, concurrent one and concurrent two. Both of these threads are going to try to access a method called force deadlock. Now take a look at force deadlock. I have a synchronized block and then a synchronized block inside. What this means is this is what we might call a semaphore. So in other words, I am only allowed to do this line of code. I'm only allowed to execute it if I own this object and I own this object. I have to own both objects in order to uh, get into that code. In the video, I demonstrated this by having both of these students hold different objects. One was holding a red nose, the other was holding a baseball. And to move forward, they had to hold both objects. But their instruction sheet told them to not give up the object no matter what. So both of them were looking at each other, realizing that they both had an object that the other person wanted. And on the same note, they wanted the object that the other person had. And they sat here. Um, they sat here and they were unable to move forward. So that's how we demonstrated that in the video. Uh, let's take a look now at our concurrent one thread and concurrent two. You see for concurrent one, it's going to grab the synchronized lock here. Then I have a delay for just a second to give the other concurrent thread a chance to, to step up. Uh, then after that second, it goes to the force deadlock. We go into the force deadlock and it has the lock for one, but not for two. So let's take a look at what the other thread does concurrent two. Concurrent two is very similar to concurrent one, but instead of locking on lock number one, concurrent two is grabbing the lock number two. So you see concurrent one grabs lock number one, concurrent two grabs lock number two. Again, delay just a second to make sure that they both grab those locks. Uh, and then we go into this forced deadlock situation and you see that one of the threads has this lock, the other thread has this lock, so do work will never execute. So let's set a few in the break. Uh, set a few breakpoints here. We'll set one here. Uh, looks like I already have one on the sleep method for concurrent one, and I have one for concurrent two. So save my work. Right-click debug, and remember again, these are the only threads that I have running uh, at the moment. So debug is Java application, and sure enough, we go to the debugger. Okay, take a look at lock number at uh, concurrent one. So concurrent one is running. Concurrent one has grabbed lock number one. How do we know it's grabbed lock number one? Because it's in the synchronized block. To be in the synchronized block, lock number one has to be available, and then this thread has to grab it. So we're good there. Let's take a look. I'm going to scroll down a bit up here. Let's take a look, and we see that concurrent two uh, also has grabbed a lock, but it has grabbed lock two. It's sleeping. We'll go ahead and do an F6 and let it sleep. And then after one second, it comes out of that sleep. So uh, we'll go up to our, let me try and get this, uh, let me try and get this a little bit easier to see on the screen. I'm going to go up to concurrent one. You see that sleeping? I choose F6, let it sleep. It awakens from the sleep and it goes to force deadlock. Now, remember right now we're in concurrent one. Concurrent one has, has ownership of lock number one, but not lock number two. So when I choose F5 and step into force deadlock, let's see what happens. Well, it's trying to get into a block right now that requires lock number two, and it does not have lock number two. So what happens when I choose F6? It simply freezes up. It says, okay, uh, I'm gonna sit here and wait until lock two becomes available. 
Okay, now I'm going to uh, go to my debugger and remember when you're taking a look in Eclipse at these threads, those literally are the different threads that are running. So this one at the top happens to be concurrent one. This one down here happens to be concurrent two. Let's take a look at what happens with concurrent two. Now concurrent two has lock number two, but not lock number one. What happens when we go into forced deadlock? We go into forced deadlock and it says, yeah, okay, I have lock number two, I can go in here. Oh, but I need lock number one, boom. And it breaks there, it waits there because it doesn't have lock number one. So right now our second thread is waiting on lock number one, where our first thread is waiting on lock number two, and they're both stuck at the same position. They can't move forward, because they can't move forward, we're in a deadly embrace or a thread deadlock where both of them are sitting waiting until eternity on the other lock. This is what many times can cause a program to freeze up. Uh, there are some ways to try to detect this. In Java version six and greater, in Windows, you can do a control break on the command line that uh, is running a Java program, and it will give you a stack trace, or in other words, it will tell you where every thread is. Uh, in the Java program. So you can find the line number it's on and that can give you a pretty good hint on where this deadlock is. In Linux Unix, that's a kill dash three in the process ID. It will give you a, thre a uh, thread dump as well or a stack trace, which is essentially what we're looking at here in the debugger. And you can use that to do a little bit of analysis to see uh, where the threads are being deadlocked. The only trick is for that to work, the threads have to be deadlocked when you do that control break or kill dash three. It's not something where you can go back in time and repeat a process. And that's one of the tricky things. You might look at this program and say, boy, you did a really bad job of programming that because look at how you're doing these locks and all that. Well, of course I did because I was trying to demonstrate what happens when a thread deadlock happens. And to do that, I had to grab the locks in a kind of funny order. And you might think, I would never write a program like that. But keep in mind, this kind of synchronized block and locking is oftentimes used on industrial strength software. Uh, could be on a server, could be on a phone, something like that. Many times the software is written by many individuals or even many groups of individuals. And it might not be very clear what the lock is for. So sometimes uh, you have multiple hands in source code or even your own hand in source code and you might have forgotten what you did six months ago. So these things, these thread deadlocks don't tend to be intentional. Uh, I don't think anybody would wanna do that intentionally. It happens to come uh, just from uh, complex programs, really. I mean, it's just part of having complex programs. So if you sense you have a thread deadlock, this is what to look for. Um, I, I, I'll tell you a personal quick story. Uh, there was one time I was merging things from a couple of different developers, and it was a process that was called uh, several million times per day, even per hour. It was a high transaction volume application. And I knew there were synchronized blocks all over. So when I agreed to merge this in, I asked for three weeks to look for thread deadlock. I did eventually find a deadlock, but it took a lot of debugging uh, to figure it out. And I was glad I found it. I kind of felt validated for asking that amount of time to do deadlocks um, because I did find one proactively before it became a problem in production. But nonetheless, the thing that was the most helpful was just setting these breakpoints at different places and then running through several different scenarios to try to make the deadlock happen. So that's a look at thread deadlocks and the synchronized block. Hope this video was helpful. Uh, let me know what you think. Thank you.